Hello, and welcome to what is not an episode of C++ Weekly. In this episode, I'm going to, well, not episode in the show, I am going to talk about this problem that seems to be rather common with DaVinci Resolve, and I have seen uh, many, many forum posts about it, and I have seen many YouTube videos that talk about how to fix this problem. And uh, what it comes down to is this thing right here that we see on screen. Render job one failed as the current clip could not be processed. This clip could not be decoded correctly. Please check to see if the clip is still available on the drive. You will find so many people giving options for how to fix this. And I'm going to show you what I believe is actually the correct fix for this. Now my understanding, having spent far too much time playing with this, is that the problem is that the uh, you have an MPEG file or some sort of video input that DaVinci effectively doesn't like. Now, if it was like a bad frame or bad audio somewhere in it, then you would kind of expect that you would have a consistent point of failure where it would always fail decoding the same frame every time. That's not what happens. So I don't know if it's just, like I said, bad input file or something that the, that the software just quote doesn't like in some way. I'm not entirely sure there. Uh, but I tried many different times on many different computers rendering the same videos over and over again, and I did notice a consistent theme that all the videos that I had a hard time rendering were ones that had been captured with um, Cyberlink's display capture uh, screen capture software. And now I'm trying to edit this in DaVinci Resolve. And it does seem that if you pay attention on the forum posts and whatever, that lots of people are complaining that it's often something that they did a screen capture with. And then you have other people saying things like, oh, but you know, MPEGs, those aren't really designed for editing and whatever. But that's what we have, right? If we're using our screen capture software, we, uh, most of us probably can't afford or don't want the extra expense and whatever of having an HDMI screen grabber that's a completely separate device but you'll get this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK on this and I'm gonna show you the things that people say to do and don't seem to work and I'm gonna show you the things that I did do which I think is plausibly always a good idea. So I'm gonna hit OK on this. It took me actually a while to get it come back up again, kinda of do a bunch of different renders. Okay, so uh, one thing that you should notice is that we have warnings up here. Warnings, cannot get frame for particular time points. Now, this seems to be consistent, that I get these warnings whenever this is occurring. Okay, so the things that the internet will tell you to do is when you set up your render job to set a maximum speed of something like 50 here. And I tried that, and sometimes that does work. Now, a lot of people will tell you to uncheck this stop render when a frame or clip cannot be processed button. I can tell you that that is definitely not the thing that you want to do. Because if you do that, and then you render this video and you're not paying attention, uh, you might notice, like with my video here, that you end up with the top comment saying, there's something odd about this video. It seems there's a quick red screen flash with a red triangle and an exclamation mark saying media offline around 52 seconds in. And sure enough, there is in fact a quick thing here that if we can get back to it, see it? Did you see it? Went by really fast. There we go. We have to use the single frame forward and backward feature in uh, YouTube. But yep, we got a media offline encoded directly into our video. So strongly recommend that you don't do that option. So what did I ultimately do actually to solve this problem? And now, uh, I think there's probably many options here because if it failed on all MP4s or something like that, we would uh, we would be very aware of this, right? There would be a lot more uh, discussion about it and how to fix the problem. So you probably have a bunch of different options, but I'll tell you the option that I took that I think is kind of the big hammer approach and it worked here. 
So if we go into the master uh, settings for our project, we might notice that we use this DNxHRHQX profile here for optimized media storage. So that is something that you can do is uh, use FFmpeg because FFmpeg can convert from effectively anything to DNxHR. And I did this. I did a conversion of FFmpeg. I'm not going to show the full command line here. It is something that you can Google for um, because, again, it's going to vary a lot based on your uh, input files and whatever. So I'm not going to give you like something that's, you know, I think would be a magic wand or whatever. But I did a conversion from my video, which, by the way, was recorded at 15 frames per second up to 30 frames per second because that's what I wanted to render at. And I had to. Um, increase my audio bit depth to 48 kilohertz because that is required in this DNxHR format. Now, this format appears to be not very compressed or perhaps not compressed at all. This is, again, this is a high speed optimized media format or one that's used in professional video editing. So when I did this conversion, I ended up taking a file that was 346 megs to one that was in fact 12 gigabytes. So a huge explosion of the file format here, but that worked. So then the question is, well, how do you actually put this file to use? You've already done all of your edits and you don't wanna waste the time redoing all the edits. That's fine, you did your edits with this file. It turns out this file is broken, no big deal. Because you can go into your media bin here and you can take this file, right click on it, and choose replace selected clip. And as long as this clip has the same length and everything else is the one that you're replacing, you can just double click on it here and the underlying media will get swapped out and everything will work exactly like you wanted it to. Um, I had only a very minor problem when I did this but that was because I screwed up and I actually ended up with my audio track being a different length than my video track in my conversion. So make sure when you do these FFmpeg or whatever tool you use to this conversion that you get it right, which should be easy enough if you uh, double check the file before you actually do the swap out. Uh, so that's, that's what I have to say here. I think that that's really the problem. If you get this media offline error, there's something about your file. It probably doesn't conform to whatever MPEG specs or something, and DaVinci is being uh, quite a bit more um, strict about what it is looking for with its specs, so you have to ultimately uh, re-encode it as something else. It's unfortunate because it could be lossy, or if you do this uncompressed high quality file format, well then you're not going to lose anything. So uh, that's at least something to consider. So yeah, I hope this episode or video here is useful to someone out there because I wasted a whole lot of time and if I had known that I could just re-encode the file and swap it out, then I probably would have saved a lot of time. So thanks for watching this episode. And by the way, if you did stick through this whole episode, uh, this is not the kind of content I normally make. I usually do C++ programming videos. So uh, don't expect anything else about video editing software.